Welcome to the colors of nature. We're going to go over why everything is so colorful in nature. To start, I want to make sure you know your colors. Are you ready? Here are the colors of the rainbow. We have red. Can you say them with me? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and this color is purple and some people call it violet. So if you said violet, you're also right. It's purple or violet. These are the colors of the rainbow, but these colors are not just found in rainbows. They're found all over the place. And so I thought today would be fun to learn why things are different colors and then just send you on a hunt to go find colors outside. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Miss Rachel and I'm excited to be here with you. And I'm wondering, how old are you? If you're three years old, can you give me a thumbs up? Good job. If you're four years old, can you touch your nose? Good job. That's fun. If you're five years old, can I get a high five? There it is. And if you're six years old, how about we wave? All right. Well, welcome. Let's start talking about the color red. The rainbow starts with red. We'll start with red. When I think of things of that are colored red in nature, uh, one of the things that came to mind was ripe fruit. The word ripe means it's ready to eat, which means it's probably so sweet and delicious. And it's so sweet and delicious, and inside are a bunch of seeds. And when, hmm, let me tell you about my neighbor. My neighbor loves to feed the deer. She's been feeding the deer apples. And when they eat the apples, they eat the whole thing, even the seeds. And then they move along and they go somewhere else. They come back the next day for more apples. But when they move along and go somewhere else, they might deposit those seeds, drop those seeds off that they'd eaten somewhere else which gives that plant a chance to grow. So a big piece of ripe fruit like this apple helps a plant move its seeds. And the color tells the animal that it's ready to be eaten. Yummy. All right, what comes next? Orange, oh, orange. I brought these beautiful orange butterflies. This one's a little more brown, but this one is orange. This is a female and a male. This is called a queen butterfly, and they mostly live down in South America, maybe a little bit um, south of North America. But these are colored orange because they're a warning to predators. A predator is an animal who'd want to eat this guy like a, like a bird. But when it has these bright colors, it tells the bird, wait a second, you don't want to eat me. I don't taste very good. Because these guys, when they're caterpillars, they eat these plants that make them kind of taste gross. And so birds know not to eat these guys um, because of their bright orange warning color. Don't eat me, don't eat me. So some colors are for warnings. Let's take a look at the color yellow. For that, I brought acorn. Say hello, acorn. Acorn is a box turtle. He's staying with us because he has a little bump on his face and it needs to heal before he can go back into the wild. Acorn is an eastern box turtle, and eastern box turtles are awesome, and they live in the forest, and they don't want to get eaten, so they have to hide. They have the shell to protect them, but they also really want to hide. So their shell is brown, but you can tell there's a lot of yellowing in there, and even look at his, his legs. See all that yellow? That yellow makes him look like the sunlight on the forest floor, so he can camouflage. Can you say camouflage? Camouflage allows animals to hide. So this guy wants to hide, so he's gotta look like the forest floor on dark days and on sunny days. So this yellow is for camouflage. All right, we'll put him back gently. Green, have you ever seen green outside before? Of course you have, green is everywhere. Green makes up the majority of the color of plants. The majority is the most. This green color is really, really important to a plant. It's the color that collects the sunlight the best. And plants need sunlight because in order to grow, they need energy. When we need energy, we have a snack. When plants need energy, they take energy from the sun and they turn it into energy that they can use to grow and to make flowers and to make fruits ripen. Um, so this green color is a pigment made by the plant to collect energy. Pretty neat, huh? Blues, 
well, I'm a big fan of birds. So when I thought of the color blue, I thought of blue feathers. Now sometimes, like in the case of acorn, animals are colored a certain way so they can blend in. And sometimes animals are colored a certain way so they can stand out. And beautiful birds with beautiful feathers want to stand out. That's how they find friends. Friends to make a nest with them and friends to raise chicks with them. So these beautiful colors attract friends who will come and help them um, lay eggs and take care of their babies. And finally, remember the last color of the rainbow, the purple or the violet. I had to go outside and collect a beautiful purple zinnia from my garden just for you guys to see. This purple zinnia is colored purple to attract pollinators. Pollinators are animals who are going to help this plant move its pollen. And when its pollen moves, it gets to make seeds. And seeds, of course, are going to bring me beautiful flowers again next year. The purples attract the bees. Bees love purples. They love blues. They love yellows. When I was cutting this flower this morning, I actually saw a butterfly land right there because butterflies love the color yellow also. They also love the color red. So to get as many bees and butterflies in your garden, you want to have as many different colored flowers as you can plant, as you have room for. All right, friends, I am so glad you checked in for this lesson. You now get to go on a bingo style scavenger hunt with your family to look for as many colors outside as you can find. And if you had a good time, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, your grownups can find me on social media. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoy the bingo game. Bye-bye.